Okay, so it is slightly after noon. It is Monday. It is the 8th of August. Uh, first question. If there's anyone in here that has not attended one of these webinars with me before, just say something in um, the question area. Just let me know how many people there are that I need to bear in mind are probably going to be slightly, shall we say, new to the terminology. It's pretty simple, but ju it just helps me understand. Okay, so we got we got a few new people. Um, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to run through charts. I'm going to run through charts in the way that I normally do. Most of you, it seems, have been in on previous webinars, and so you know I, I'm going to go through. Um, I typically have a bit of a system. I, I'm going to start with the uh, start with the dollar index, look at treasuries. Uh, we'll go across, see what the E-mini S&P is up to. Then we'll jump across, see what's happening with uh, currencies, and then we'll finish off by looking at gold, silver, and we've got, um, I think we've got about two or three commodities that uh, various members have asked me to look at. So um, let's start with the dollar. So, and, and just let, let me explain one thing. I'm going to run this like a regular internal member-only webinar. And what that means is I'm going to be making references to what I've been saying over the last few days. Those of you that are on this webinar might be scratching your head. So when I say things like, well, on Friday I said this, and on Sunday I was looking for that, you might be somewhat confused. Well, what I'm referring to is uh, the ongoing analysis that's posted on a daily basis. Anyway, that's that. So, uh, dollar. I started warning yesterday. It was very early yesterday morning, Sunday morning, when I started um, posting analysis saying that I was actually um, quite wary of a move higher in the dollar. Um, we've got several charts, basically, that make me wary of a move higher in the dollar. But let's look at just the dollar itself for a second. So first of all, we've got the dollar on a daily chart. And let me zoom out for perspective. So we have a downtrending slope. The downtrending slope, if you actually go all the way back to uh, last year, in fact, had been working within the fork. We then spiked out of the fork. And once we spiked out of the fork in this area right here, I still pay attention to the downtrending slope. And what I'm paying attention to now is the fact that we're now working our way lower on this particular channel right here. So hang on, someone's saying no audio. I'm guessing if there was no audio, I'd have lots of people saying that by now. So Michael, um, it's pointless me saying, Michael, it's your problem, because if you have no audio, you can't hear me saying it. But um, hopefully you'll be able to uh, check in on the recording. OK, it's all good now. Perfect. Um, anyway, so the the slope is still working. This, this slope continues to work. Um, and what I've been paying attention to in the dollar over the last uh, several months is that where we'd previously had resistance, which would be here and here and here, we breach it with a pretty spectacular move to the upside, courtesy of, um, I guess, 52% of the uh, voters in the UK. Brexit referendum, bang, up we go through resistance. More to the point, when we fall back, we get support in this area here. We fell back again. In fact, we were looking for a move back because what I've been paying attention to over the last two weeks is this potential uptrending channel, which I suspect may be forming. And therefore, when we rose up to the ceiling of it, which is obviously in this area right here, I was looking for a bit of a pullback. We got the pullback, and I was watching to see whether we would find support here. That's where I was actually looking for support. We didn't quite make it, but you can see that it's close enough. Um, and, and one of the things that I find that people get a little bit too hung up on is looking for pip perfect touches at lines. And if they don't get a, a touch right there, they're convinced that the slope is no longer working. Uh, poppycock. The fact is, it fell back. Um, we got support. We got support. We're moving back to the upside. And what I've been saying over the last uh, two days is I'm going to watch to see whether we run into resistance either here or here. In other words, are we abiding by the downtrending slope or the uptrending slope? And that's all I'm really looking for. So Friday saw us rise up and tag the initial line, saw a little bit of a pullback. And I'm not convinced. I'm really not convinced. I suspect that we may take out this line to the upside. Early days. Let's wait and see how things go. We've got no real news of consequence till, until tomorrow. But again, the overriding feature on this chart that I'm cautious of is this. Resistance, resistance, resistance has become support, and again, support. Resistance becoming support tells me to look for a leg to the upside. We've had a leg to the upside. The only question is, where do we run out of steam? Is it here, or is it here? And that's important because if we do continue to the upside into this area here, it tells me two things. Number one, we're breaching the downtrending slope, but number two, we are abiding by an uptrending slope. 
which tells me to look for a potentially even longer move to the upside. Um, dollar on a weekly chart, um, I'm looking for resistance probably up around like the high 98s in this area right here. Again, you can see we have support, support, bit of a flush, back to support, bit of a flush, back to support. So it's very, very sloppy around support, but what I'm ultimately looking for is resistance up around the high 98s. Dollar index on a 240 minute chart. Again, you can see I have very, very similar um, setup uh, in place. And again, if you if you look, you can see I was bearish the dollar throughout this period here, but I've now morphed into a more bullish stance for the dollar based upon what we're seeing on the 240 minute chart. And once again, we actually had resistance, which we fell back from. When we fell back from that resistance, these are actually different lines from what we had on the daily chart. But again, you can see that again, support has become support. I'm gonna be watching for resistance in this area here or this area here. So bottom line, dollar, I am wary of a move higher in the dollar. We've got other charts that make me wary of that also. Um, and I didn't really want to jump around, but I'll do it anyway. Um, so the euro, this is the euro. Um, I, I want to go through this in more detail, this particular chart. But again, support, support becoming, in fact, support there also becoming resistance, resistance. That's bearish context. If anyone's confused, shout out. But again, when support becomes resistance, it's bearish context. I look for a leg to the downside. Um, this particular high right here was the Brexit referendum. So I actually was looking for resistance in this area here going into the referendum. Um, we actually um, basically fell off of a cliff, 114s down to 109s. But when we then bounced out of the referendum, and in fact, it was literally the next day when I said, OK, we, you know, we, obviously that resistance worked and boy, did it ever work. But if we now work our way back to the upside, the place I would actually look for resistance is right here. It's the obvious place to look for resistance, because if you think about it, zooming out again, there is the uptrending slope. So we actually had had support and support. That's the place to look for resistance. Sure enough, it worked perfectly. We popped up, tagged resistance around 112, just slightly shy of 112. Down we go. And again, what I'd said was, well, let's assume the slope is still working. And therefore, we now look for support in this area here. Let's put that green line back. So we actually worked our way a little bit lower. Let me try and get that correct. We worked our way a little bit lower. And throughout this period here, what I actually said was, um, if you recall, not OK, we've moved below the line, the euro is toast, you know, we're going off of a cliff. It was actually the opposite. What I said was, I'm not convinced that this is a breach of the line. I'm actually not convinced. It looks just to me as if we just have messy support in this area here. And therefore, what I'm going to look for is a move back to the upside and potentially to see whether this then becomes support fact of the matter is we did reverse back to the upside we didn't get um, a bounce at support until right here so we came down friday tagged support saw a bounce from 11040s up to about one nah, just north of 111 so about a 60 pip bounce so you're thinking to yourself hang on i thought we were talking about why the dollar might go higher and yet you're talking about the euro at support so surely that means dollar going lower look at the bigger picture look at the slope Support, support, resistance, resistance. What does that tell you to look for? Well, a leg to the downside. Down we go. Support, support, becoming resistance. What does that tell you to look for? A leg to the downside. Well, to be fair, we moved lower, but we really haven't taken out support in a meaningful manner. So here's what I became very cautious of towards the middle of last week. Euro worked its way up. And what I said at the time was, and I think this was either Tuesday or Wednesday of last week, I said, look, there's two places to look for resistance. The place I would really look for resistance is right here, because this is the line that's obviously worked previously. And the place where I'd probably have a bit of a weather eye, in other words, just maybe have a half-hearted watch to see if it becomes resistance, is this area right here. Well, as you can see, it did become resistance. So how does this affect the context on the chart? Where was our, pr where was our prior ceiling? Well, it was up here. Then where was it? No, it was here. Now where is it? Now it's down here. So the euro ceiling is stepping lower and lower and lower. And therefore, despite the fact that, yes, we did get a bounce at our support, what I'm looking for in the euro is this. We've got to stay above this area here, which is around 110.40s. But if we move through, really the 110 area, for me, is significant. If we take out 110 to the downside, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I would be probably looking for a bigger leg to the downside. But again, all you've got to look at is support, resistance, 
support resistance now look resistance resistance if this support here gives way my expectation expectation is a leg to the downside i said that i wouldn't kind of go off in tangents and that's exactly what i'm doing so that's the euro why else am i potentially going to be looking for a move higher in the dollar index well here's another example this is the swiss franc so i've been looking for support down around the uh, 96 40 area i had lines like that which have now been removed uh, we came down we tagged it once we tagged it twice up we go this move to the upside is from 96 40 up to about like 98 40 so we're up about like 200 pips at this point is that right yeah about 200 pips so i'm going to be looking for resistance in this area here as far as i'm concerned this actually is no man's land However, what I'm going to be looking for is to see how we breach this wedge. This is simply a wedge as far as I'm concerned. We've got resistance, which is descending, and support, which is ascending. And that's all I'm looking at. So I'm just simply watching to see how we're going to breach out of this particular wedge. Here's another reason why a move through this particular level would be quite concerning if you were, uh, shall we say, uh, short the dollar. Let me step up and look at the Swiss franc on a weekly chart. The weekly chart for the Swiss franc, uh, Swiss franc is right here. And as you can see, we have a bit of a mixed message going on here. We've actually got a modified shift, which is this particular slope to the upside right here. But what we also have is a channel that's been working quite well over the last uh, about six months, eight months to the downside. Again, we have a wedge. Resistance is in this area here. Support is down in this area here. I want to see how we breach the wedge on the daily and the weekly for the Swiss franc. But what I'm very cognizant of is this particular rejection that we were looking for over the last two weeks worked out beautifully. I'm just not convinced it's going to hold. If the Swissy moves up above about really 99, 99.50 to the upside, um, you could really see a, a significant move to the upside, potentially up into this area here, which is up around 103. So again, the euro and the Swissy potentially um, hint at a higher dollar. Um, I'm trying to think what other vehicle I would like to show in relation to that. Here's another one, actually. This is the euro again. So this is the euro on a weekly chart. It looks a little bit messy. Again, though, just look at the overall context. The overall context, this is the channel that we've been uh, following in the euro on a weekly chart to the downside. We started paying attention once the euro started um, seeing a movement back to the upside in this area here and we started looking to see whether it would abide by an uptrending slope we had resistance resistance support and support right here we should have maintained that support the problem i have is not only did we not uh, maintain the support we fell beneath it reversed back to the upside and we we're actually seeing resistance underneath this particular fork so for me this particular high here up in the 112s is slightly concerning i'm, I'm not going to get too carried away with the euro to the downside just yet um, we're going to pay attention to it on smaller time frame probably the daily is my preferred time frame right now but the swissy oh sorry the euro has not only bounced and let me just zoom in further so again the daily chart you remember i said we bounced at support on the daily chart well a different slope we once again bounced at support on the 240 minute chart so this is the 240 and what i said yesterday was i'm going to be looking for support pretty much right here so this is around about the 110 60s area i really need to see support in the euro in this area here um, otherwise i'm going to start to become very very concerned and that's also a significant level on our downtrending slope so we're actually looking for support in this area right here based upon both the up and the downtrending slope okay so that's uh, and there's a 240 minute view of the swiss franc but regardless the, the point i'm really trying to get across here is dollar I, I i definitely am wary to the upside in the dollar right now that was a very long way of describing why i'm looking for the dollar to move higher um, but again it seems to be working out relatively well so right now and if we punch through this line here that's the next place i'm going to look for resistance so that's the dollar index um I'm also going to look at things like crude oil uh, because obviously there's a reasonable correlation between dollar and crude. Um, I will look obviously at gold and silver, albeit there is not a strong correlation between the dollar and gold at the moment, uh, which might surprise some of you. Um, traditionally, there's obviously been a very good inverse correlation between them. But I've noticed over the last month or two, we have many, many days where the dollar is moving higher and gold is moving higher, or the dollar is moving lower and gold is moving lower. So I, I, I'm not kind of too hung up on that correlation right now. Treasuries. Um, treasuries, 30-year uh, treasuries, 10-year notes. So here's the 30-year. 
Um, this is the 30-year slope I've been paying attention to, paid attention to resistance and resistance back in 2015 and earlier this year. That's where I was looking for um, resistance once more. And if I try and remove some lines and circles, you can see that what's actually happened is we punched up through that line, come back down, it becomes support and support. I'm watching 30-year to see whether we actually have support in this particular area here. And if we do start moving back to the upside in the 30-year, I will actually be looking for weakness in e mini s and I started looking for weakness in e mini s and over the weekend. Um, we'll look at that in just a second. We'd risen up from support. Um, I know James got long. Um, was it James? No, it was Johan got long, actually, that and the ES service um, run that up into resistance. And so I just want to see whether we actually fall back from that resistance. We'll, we'll have a look at that chart in just a second. So again, treasuries, 30-year treasuries at support. Um, I'm also watching um, the 10-year um, on the weekly chart. And again, there you go. That's the 10-year on a weekly chart. Once again, it's at support. So as I'd said, whenever this was, look for a pullback and maybe uh, support down in this area here. We have one bounce in this area here. Come straight back to it in this area here. I'm watching to see whether we get a move back to the upside in both the 10-year notes as well as the 30-year uh, this, by the way, is a 240-minute chart. This is one I've started looking at recently, modified shift, and um, I've been looking for support. I think this was Thursday's webinar. Um, on Thursday's webinar, I said maybe watch for support down in this area here. And you can see that's working out relatively well. Um, we came down, initial bounce. Um, this is obviously a bar just from this morning. I just want to see whether we start to give it a traction to the upside. So treasuries, um, I'm generally looking for a move higher right now both both uh, 30 year and 10 year are at support okay e mini s p so e mini s p has been a pain in the you know what um throughout effectively the back half of july i'd been looking for support in this area here uh, back in the early part of july that worked out really well um, and then i started warning about resistance up in this area here and again that worked out really well so that was a move from like 2070s up to about 2170 about 100 points to the upside but once we got up to that 2170 area and I started saying I thought that we we're at resistance, I'll be honest with you, I was looking potentially for something like this. I was looking for a move down into support and maybe a bit of a bounce. And you can see that, well, did we get a move down to support? Well, yeah, we did. Um, did we bounce from support? Yes, we did. It, was it as straightforward as I thought it might be? No, it wasn't. We basically went into this painful grind, uh, which lasted, I think this was like about three weeks. Um, three weeks just absolutely sideways in such a tight little range. We had a fake to the upside, a bit of a fake out to the upside, uh, reversed, fake out to the downside, and then we reverse higher. So again, what I've been talking about, um, I believe it was probably Tuesday's webinar of last week. What I said was, this is the place I'd be looking for support in um, e mini s and To be fair, I said 21.39. We actually bounced from 21.41, about two points away. Um, but what, to be fair, I did say at the time was the line hadn't been touched in like a, nearly a month, so just tread carefully. We got an initial bounce. Obviously, this is the initial bounce right here. I then said, okay, now we know the line's working. You're looking for a revisit for a leg to the upside. Uh, we got almost a revisit. Again, we missed it to the tune of about a point before reversing hard to the upside. I drew in uh, the next line up saying, eh, it looks to me like this might be supportive in this area here and abiding by the slope. And that's the key thing. If it's abiding by the slope, then I would watch for it to become resistance. And what I said very early yesterday morning, I think it was like five, six o'clock yesterday morning, was when the markets open Sunday night, Monday, I would be careful and watching to see whether actually we get a bit of a pullback from this particular area here. And that's the next place I'm going to be looking for support. Obviously, down around 2150s. Um, well, we saw a bit of a flush, to be fair. A slight flush overnight. Flushes don't really mean much to me. Um, and those of you that have been around for a while know what I mean by that. So, for example, if you look at this line here, um, the flush above the line means absolutely nothing. I'm much more interested in whether it's a breach than a flush. And for me, if this is resistance here, and we come up and hit it, and we do something like this, it seems to me that a lot of people immediately think that this is a breach, and therefore they want to get long right here, only to see the vehicle then do something like this, 
and then off of a cliff to the downside. So what I'm always looking for is not so much the high of the bar. I want to see where we get um, afterwards. Uh, do we see support here indicating a leg to the upside? Or, in fact, do we actually simply reverse back below? It becomes resistance. And then at that point, we then have a shoulder, a head, a shoulder, and off a cliff we go. So don't get too kind of um, snookered into the, these types of po uh, pin bars here where you see a bit of a push above resistance, a bit of a push below support. It means absolutely nothing. It's just noise. So uh, equally in this area here, this is just noise. I'm probably going to be watching more to see whether we can get a bit of a pullback into support. So that's the E-mini S&P. Um, let's go up and look at some currencies. So I kind of look at the currencies in really, I guess, like three categories. We've got the commodity pairs. So I look at typically every single morning, the Aussie, the CAD, and the Kiwi. Um, the Australian dollar, I've been actually relatively bullish on uh, the Australian dollar for quite a while since down around the 71 area. Um, I'm getting a little bit wary in this area here. This actually was the place I was looking for resistance. Um, We'll wait and see if we can punch through. Um, the New Zealand dollar equally has resistance in this area here. And again, I want to see whether we can punch through. Um, the odd one out, so to speak, is actually the Canadian dollar. Because if you actually look at the Canadian dollar, um, we were bearing. In fact, let me get on a 240. It looks much nicer. There you go. That's the Canadian dollar on a 240-minute chart. We were following it throughout February, March, April. Um, in fact, we saw a breach coming to the upside. This breach we saw on the morning of the breach before it occurred and in fact the canadian dollar was if i can zoom in at where was it 2504 the canadian dollar was right there when i said just be very very careful in here of a breach to the upside and i think it was like about two hours later we, we just went through the roof but the reason is incredibly simple it's it's you know it's nothing um there's nothing particularly special about how we were able to step aside from that breach. Look at where support is in the Canadian dollar on the downtrending slope. It, it's relatively consistent. Okay, it's this line right here. Bit of a flush, but again, support, support. So we actually have pretty consistent support along this line. Now where do we have support along the Canadian dollar? Now we have support here once, twice, three times and again you can see these blue lines which are all drawn in contemporaneously so these lines were all drawn in on the day and this was me saying that's the place to look for a bounce well we got it that's the place to look for a bounce well we got it and in fact to be fair i was looking for resistance up in this area here but you can see that we actually snugged up into a much tighter channel with resistance along this line here so what happens then so think about it our floor has stepped up from here to here now what happens to the floor? So when I saw this pin bar here with a very bullish close and an even higher floor, it made me very wary that we were going to take out this resistance to the upside. And in fact, that was the turn. That was the bar that turned the Canadian dollar from 124s up to 132, 800 pips. So once we had the breach, so once we had the breach in this area here, what I suggested for about a month or six weeks was, okay, that's great. You know, if you are long, you're happy. If you are short, you are happy to have stepped aside the breach. But what we need to do now is wait for effectively um, structure to draw an uptrending slope. We waited for the high, we waited for the low. And once we started to move back to the upside, we then drew in this particular fork, the blue fork that you're now looking at. So... What I'm saying is, in terms of the Canadian dollar versus the Aussie and the Kiwi, Canadian dollar has been bearish versus the US dollar. This is spot FX. As it works its way higher, it is weakening versus the US dollar. Again, if anyone's confused, let me know. This is not futures. So therefore, the weakening that we are seeing here through June and July what would you also potentially expect to see weakening at the same time bearing in mind what is it that canadian dollar is relatively well correlated with crude oil so once you have your change of behavior in a canadian dollar which occurred right here in may and then we started moving back to the upside let's go up and look at crude oil so here's crude oil 
And again, we've, we've been bullish crude oil um, throughout this period here. Uh, throughout all of this period here, I was bullish crude. And then I started becoming very, very wary. And in this area right here, I warned that in fact, I suspected we would actually breach the slope to the downside because of what I was seeing in Canadian dollar. So what I'm really trying to reinforce here is it was literally the fact that we were seeing a breach in Canadian dollar that warned me that maybe crude would do something similar. So sure enough, crude actually did breach. Crude fell out of the slope in this area right here. Down we go. Same thing. You just wait for a reversal, wait to be able to draw in a downtrending slope. We reverse back to the upside. I'm guessing a lot of people were very happy at that point because we'd actually reverse back up above 50. There it is, about 50 and, uh, 50 and a half. But all I'm interested in is the slope. So previously, where have we been seeing support? Well, here, that's obviously been support. So where have we just run into resistance? Exactly in the same place. The fact that support has become resistance tells me what? We're expecting a move to the downside, so we draw in a downtrending slope, and that is the downtrending slope that we've been following, in fact, on a 240-minute chart since. This particular fork we've been following since June. And you can see just how well it has actually been working. And in fact, you can see even here, I'd look for resistance back in this area here. You can see how well that worked. That was back in back into July up around 46s. And then what we started looking at was support becomes resistance. Support becomes resistance. We actually had crude inventories out about a week ago. And what I said was, again, look for resistance in this area here. This bar here is crude inventories. We came out, we popped up, tagged the line one more time, down we go. So throughout this period, probably here, we've been fairly bearish crude. And what I've been looking for is, in fact, what I did say was I'd look for resistance here. Whoops, there, that's the place to look for resistance. But we got a change in behavior. And those of you that received the email as an invitation to this particular webinar, uh, which I think I sent out either Friday or Sunday, this is what we had noted on the Thursday webinar last week. And what I said was, look, we've been, if you think about it, all we've done in crude oil recently is support has become resistance. Support has become resistance. Bearish, bearish, bearish. Until this bar here. Now look what happens. Now we have support becoming resistance. Resistance. Nearly resistance, bit of a gap. We spike through it. And I started drawing in the arrows and saying, this is a notable change. This is a change of behavior in crude oil. It's now bullish. Again, if anyone's confused, um, shout out. But it, it's relatively straightforward. And so what I said was, I would next look for resistance here. If we don't get resistance there, look up in this area here. Obviously, we shot straight through the first line of resistance. We're kind of hold in a holding pattern right now at the second line of resistance but what i'm starting to do is i'm starting to get to the point where this change of behavior where resistance breaches and become support and we see a leg to the upside makes me start to want to draw in something to the upside we don't have enough structure so what i would look for is potentially something like this maybe as a modified shift something like that now there's a not, not enough granularity on this chart. You'd probably drop to like a 60 minute and draw in that type of fork on a 60 minute chart. But again, I just wanted to talk about what's going on in um, crude oil right now. And now let's relay that back to the Canadian dollar. So you remember what I said? Canadian dollar turned bullish. In other words, it was weakening versus the US dollar back in this area here, which was May, June. We go back to the Canadian dollar. Here it is. There is that May-June turn in the Canadian dollar to the upside and crude oil, as we just saw, to the downside. So therefore, now that we're watching Canadian dollar, let's look at it on a 240 so we have better granularity. Yes, we're still weakening. Uh, weakening. I'm, by the way, I had been looking for support in this area here. That worked out absolutely beautifully. 2870s took us up into about 32s, about 400 pips to the upside. Um, and in fact, not only that, but when we hit this area here, I warned about the fact that I thought we were at resistance. And I said, watch for a bit of a pullback in the Canadian dollar. Again, that worked out incredibly well. We had a pullback from 32s down to about 30, about 200, 240 pips. The fact that we turned north without touching support makes me wary. But I will still look for resistance here. And what I'm really going to be watching for is to see whether the Canadian dollar will now turn south strengthening versus the US dollar as crude is. So in other words, crude has now made a turn. 
I want to see whether that turn um, continues. And by the way, crude isn't out of the um, out of the woods yet. Here is the weekly chart for crude oil. So I warned about the breakout trade back here. This was back in June. I said, look, just be careful. You've got a significant high at 50. You're going to have a lot of people wanting to get long just here, looking to run it back up. And sure enough, we just slightly popped above that particular level to the tune of about like 30 cents and then fell off of a cliff. Um, I'd been looking for support in this area here, which obviously did not materialize. And actually on the smaller uh, time frame, the 240, that's when things turned even more bearish. Now that we've fallen through it, I'm gonna watch to see whether it becomes resistance. And that resistance is up around 44.30, about a buck and a half, maybe about a buck and a third above where we are right now. So if it does, I would actually view that as being incredibly bearish for crude, because at that point you actually have a shoulder back here, a shoulder here, and a head in the in the middle so that's what i'm looking for in crude as far as i'm concerned the chart to pay attention to tactically is actually the 240 and i want to see where we run into resistance and obviously if we run into resistance higher than here that's really for me about the last place to watch which is around 4460. so crude is working well <clears throat> well um big change of behavior uh, made me bullish on thursday that's uh, panned out quite nicely we've moved up from 41s to about 43s so two bucks to the upside again i'm just going to be watching uh, Canadian dollar to see whether equally it starts to turn str uh, stronger versus the US dollar which would obviously be a move to the downside and what you really need for confirmation is a move through that yellow or green line to confirm the move. So that's the Aussie, the CAD, the Kiwi. Um, again, Kiwi has got, oh, by the way, head and shoulders on Kiwi, which obviously makes me very, very wary right now. I did warn, I warned about the Kiwi right there. And I said, we are in trouble in the Kiwi. We're at resistance on the daily chart. And by the way, that same resistance on the daily chart was also this resistance right here. That was it right there. And then we fell from 73 and change down to into the 69s. We fell nearly 400 pips in the New Zealand dollar. Until we can punch through this line to the upside in the New Zealand dollar, I would tread very, very carefully. Australian dollar, same story. Until we can punch through about the 77.10 area right here, I would tread very, very carefully. Australian dollar on a smaller time frame, hmm, again, we're at resistance. I still think we're at resistance in the Australian dollar. I just want to see whether we can punch through it. So I said that the currencies I kind of categorized in three areas. That was the first. That was the commodity pairs. Then we go on to the EU pairs with the euro and the pound. The pound will take about five seconds to look at. I'm not touching it. Pound is suicidal right now. Um, I do think that we're going to go lower in the pound. Uh, but if we look at it on a, let me think, a larger time frame, I think. Let's have a look. No, in fact, it's the 240. No, it was the daily. That's right. Apologies. It's just it, everything's moved so much since the referendum. It's hard to recall what went on. So let's take that bar out of the way. So this is where we were going into the referendum okay that's what the chart looked like going into the referendum we had had an uptrending slope which had worked incredibly well but what i warned about and this was literally the day before the referendum i said look just maybe be careful about one thing in fact i said it even back in this area here i said be careful you actually have a ceiling a second touch a third touch we now have a confirmed ceiling we know that we have support along the lower parallel we actually, in fact, back here, beginning of May, I said, look for a bounce in this area here. Got a nice bounce. 43 is took you up to about 46 is 47. But now look, you got one touch, second touch, third touch. So therefore, when the pound works its way back to the upside, bearing in mind, we've now seen a move below the fork. And by the way, we bounce in a very uh, precise area. Where would you look for resistance? And what I said, what this is exactly what I said the day before the referendum. Look for resistance right here. That's the place to look for resistance in, in the British pound. Now we've got some volatility, masses of volatility, obviously. But to me, that held as resistance, and then we fell off of a cliff. I'm still paying attention to the prior slope, and the prior slope tells me it's still working. We got a pit perfect bounce at the floor, ceiling ceiling and we're working our way lower i think the pound's headed lower because of that i think it will drag the euro lower because of that that also plays into me looking for a move higher in the dollar index so that's the british pound i'm not interested in it beyond that the euro 
we looked at this pretty extensively at the beginning when we we're talking about the dollar. I've talked about the fact that we have bearish context. We have support becoming resistance numerous times. I just want to see whether the euro can hold above 1040s and uh, really about 110. And as I said earlier, also Swiss franc, that was the place to look for support. We got a double tap. Up we go. This is the place to look for resistance. 9930s. That is the second category of uh, currencies. And then apart from that, I just look at the yen um, almost on its own, really. I look at the yen uh, as a standalone. So here's the yen. Um, we fell out of uh, an uptrending channel. We've been following this particular downtrending slope since the beginning of the year, in fact. Uh, we got a nice touch at the upper parallel, bounce from the median line. But what was significant is that if you look at the yen, the support at the median line very quickly became resistance, 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 resistance. You can see just how many times it was resistance. So I'd been looking for, even you can see back here in May, look for a bounce up that line up to resistance, and that's precisely what happened. We fell, we hit the line, we bounced all the way up to resistance. So this slope has been working very, very well. I was looking to see whether resistance in this area here would hold. It did not. And once we started pushing up through this particular line, I said that I would hold off until we got to about the 108 area up in this area here. Now, as you can see, we just didn't quite make it. We made it up to like 107 and a half, just missed about the 108 area. Um, but once it became apparent that we were rolling over, I then said that I would be targeting move down into this area here. And again, we've actually overshot it slightly to the downside. And, and what I've actually been saying in the yen for about the last week is I don't honestly have a strong opinion here. For me, the, the bigger picture for the yen is actually this one right here. Um, so we actually have a long-term trend line that goes back to the 1990s. In fact, it goes back further. There it is. goes back to the 1980s. So this is like 1989, second touch third touch we watched this throughout the back end of last year saying to maybe look for a big move to the downside in uh, the yen huge move to the downside we moved down from 123 down to south of 100 so this is like a 23 2400 pip move to the downside um <clears throat> i think this was a webinar though of about two or three weeks ago where a member said well hang on how about a trend line like this um and again a bit of resistance we spike through it to the upside come back down and find support so We've actually now been actually more wary of a move to the upside in the Japanese yen. In other words, a weakening in the yen as it moves higher versus the dollar. And that's what we're watching for right now. So again, back down to the smaller time frame. Um, I'm actually now becoming wary of A, a move back to this area here, and actually B, a move through resistance. We'll wait and see how it pans out. But um, again, this is the downtrending slope. And if we get a move through about 107.5, it would be significant. Because we've been below this particular line since February, basically early February of this year. So again, that move would be very, very significant. Um, let's move on. So that's the Japanese yen. I want to look at a couple of the uh, commodities. Someone's asked me to look at copper. Um, Greg, are you in here today? Yes, you are. Hey, Greg. Um, let's yep hey how you doing now let's have a look at copper so copper as you know um, I've been actually watching to see whether we're going to run into support in this area here so in fact it's right back here that I said it so when we we're up here I was hypothesizing that potentially we had an uptrending fork um, and bearing in mind by the way look at this resistance here has become support here and support here so it makes me feel a little bit more bullish copper so sure enough we have a nice leg to the upside doesn't mean we're going to go to the moon but it definitely makes me interested so I drew in an uptrending fork the uptrending fork looked again interesting so when we pull back this is pretty much what I was looking for. So again, I'd said back here, um, back in the middle of July, look for a, maybe a bounce down in this area here. Obviously, it took a little bit longer to get down there, but here, this is where we are right now. So copper, for me, is something to monitor in this area right here, down around 216. Um, up on the weekly chart, let's see if I can pull that up. Up on the weekly chart, things are a little, shall we say, a little bit more indeterminate. Um, this is a slope that has worked incredibly well for the last maybe three years. Um, we watched for resistance for the entirety of the summer of 14, and it worked stunningly well. Down we go to the median line, took a bounce. Looked, in fact, we looked for support in this area here based upon the two prior lows. Then when we ran it back up, we watched for resistance. Down it goes again. 
got support the median line up it goes so what i'm really looking for in copper is confirmation that we're going to take out this particular line here It's looking a little bit more messy. And again, we've been below this particular line since July of last year. However, it's easy to make the argument that we've actually gone through the line, come back down, and we're a potential support for a leg to the upside. In other words, resistance all the way along here has become support right here. Early days, early days. I'm going to be watching, though, the daily chart uh, to see whether that's going to play out. Um, and again, this particular slope here in uh, the daily chart, all I really want to see here is just a little bit of altitude to the upside, a revisit for a leg to the upside. That's what I'm looking for in uh, copper. Um, cotton, someone asked for. So cotton, um, th there's probably not a lot I can add to cotton beyond what I said um, about three or four weeks ago. So if you recall, when we were in this area here, what I said was, I'm looking to see whether we run into resistance. But in this area here, I said I would be very, very much on the watch for a push through the ceiling. And I felt that if we took out that ceiling to the upside, which was around like 68, I thought that we would actually see a significant move. Uh, we actually did. We actually saw it explode basically from 68 up to 78. Um, we're now watching for a bit of a pullback. And I just want to see whether what had been um, resistance previously, resistance, resistance, does it become support in this area here? That's what I'm watching for in terms of cotton. Hey, no problem, Greg. Um, someone wants to look at lumber. There's lumber. That's what I've been watching in lumber. We have an ascending wedge. Uh, we actually have resistance, 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 resistance. We have support all the way along here. Very steep wedge. And I actually looked at this on the webinar. I think it was last week someone asked me to look at that. So all I'm really looking forward to see whether lumber can stay above this particular area right here. Uh, Greg says, can we quickly look at corn? As it's you, Greg, no problem. Um, where is it now? Um, here it is. So this is corn. Um, it's off a cliff, basically. Um, uh, like another few ticks and it will be in hell. Um, again, sideways, very, very much sideways throughout 2015 and 2016. Bit of a fake out to the upside um, into resistance right up here. Once, twice, three times. Hit it the fourth time and then it's like off a cliff. So I think all I would really look at in terms of corn right now, if I'm honest, Actually, I probably wouldn't look at anything. There's just not a lot here that appeals to me. I think I would only watch to see whether that becomes resistance for a leg to the downside. That's about all I would re really look at. No problem, Mark. You're welcome. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of it, really, as far as I'm concerned in corn. Let's, um, let me think where we go from here. Let's go down, look at gold and silver. Um, give me a second, guys, while I pull up the charts. Oh, that's holding. That's nice. And that's holding. That's nice. Okay, it looks like gold and silver are going to be easy today. And by the way, I've noticed I've had a couple of you saying that you need to leave. Um, guys, if you want to see this analysis on a daily basis, go to Coglan Capital. And you can, if you go to the um, calendar for today, you'll see the August specials. This is the web address, coglancapital.com slash pro, uh, promo. And these are the specials that we're running right now. And... Um, Again, if you're interested in seeing this analysis, it's posted every morning around about like 7 o'clock New York time in the morning. And we do webinars every Monday and Thursday. Right, let's go and look at gold and silver. Uh, okay, so those of you that haven't been on a webinar for a while, um, you probably need to sit down. This may be something of a shock to you. I have been bullish gold and silver for about the last, uh, I don't know, last few months anyway. Um, it, it, it's a rare occurrence. It really is like Haley's Comet. It doesn't happen often. Um, but I, I think it's, I, I keep talking about this. The fact is, yeah, Jim says it's incredible. <laughs> um, you know what? Look, here's the thing. I suspect that 90% of people that do analysis on gold and silver are, shall we say, fundamentally bullish gold and silver, no matter what's happening. I, I mean, you, you could see gold and silver doing this, and they'll be bullish, 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 the whole way down they're bullish. And you know what? I don't think that helps anyone. I think that that's very hurtful. I was bullish in this area here for obvious reasons. I was bearish in this area here for very obvious reasons. So I will turn bullish when the charts tell me it makes sense to be bullish. I mean, I hate to state the obvious. So I was bearish throughout this period here. 
all throughout this period here i was bearish looking for support down at the floor uh, we got support 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 up we go i had to actually look for resistance here because well why wouldn't i i mean it's worked like once twice three times whoops three times four times so it's worked four times for resistance so why wouldn't i look for resistance here again i did we didn't get it we shot straight through it what happens subsequently well resistance here has now become support and this is what i said back in may i would look for support down around 1200 and we came down we tagged it saw a nice push to the upside so you're thinking well that's great so so is that why you're bullish well that's one of the reasons look what else happened look at this significant high here at 1308 that became support so now you have two instances in gold. And this isn't on a 240-minute chart. It's not on a daily chart. This is on a weekly chart. You've got two instances now where resistance has become support. And again, resistance has become support. Very, very positive to the upside. So that's gold. Let's go and see what silver's been up to. Well, silver, to be fair, I've only been paying attention to for the last maybe two years on horizontals on the weekly. And really, as far as I'm concerned, and what I said since the beginning of this year, for those of you that uh, attended public webinars at the beginning of the year, all I said was, until we start taking out this level to the upside, I'm not really interested in silver. Silver is the killing fields, as far as I'm concerned. People get um, killed on the longs and on the shorts. So now we have taken out that to the upside and what i've been looking for on the weekly chart as you can see uh, this was obviously post brexit i said okay what i would really look for there's not a lot on the weekly chart but what i would really look for is support down in this area here so i've been looking for support down around the sort of like 19 teens uh, we bottomed at 1925 and saw a pop to the upside Th this to me is the place to look for support I, mean, I could probably draw in a sliding parallel i'm guessing there you go so th that to me is the place i'm looking for support from and I did post into uh, Metals Trades, uh, the chat page this morning, that I thought that the, the bottom was in um, because we actually had both silver and gold bouncing from support. So this for me is support for silver. Um, gold, well, we already hit the support down around 1310, uh, 1308, 1310. So let's drill in to a smaller time frame. Let's go into the daily chart. So this is silver. And again, what I said was back here, wherever this was, this was, let me just check, this was uh, beginning of the month, it looks like. So what I said was, that's the place I would be looking for support in silver for obvious reasons. Let me zoom out. There is the fork. There is the slope that we've been paying attention to. One bounce here, second bounce here, up we go. Take out resistance. Um, and so in all fairness, what I would have been looking for is support there, okay? I would look to see whether this resistance here would be, become supportive. So we come down. I would have looked uh, for it just a bit lower, but like I said, I was looking 19 teens. It bottomed in the 19, like 30 or so area. So I draw in a sliding parallel, and that's the place to look for support. And again, you can see it's worked out pretty well. Um, I'm not suggesting that we're about to go to the moon. All I'm suggesting is I find it significant that back here we're looking for support down there and again we've hit it and so i'm watching to see whether we see a leg back to the upside really for me silver's got to take out the post brexit high i find it notable that gold has taken out its post brexit high silver has not let's go and look at gold here's gold on the uh, daily chart again the post brexit high was actually here we took it out once up into this area here and then we pretty much even uh, evened it or equaled it i guess silver not the case there was the uh, post Brexit high, and we've never really come close to it. So silver is lagging somewhat, but again, we're bouncing from support. I want to see whether that bounce continues. Gold. So again, I've been looking for support in gold down in this area here. Um, I think 1341 was what I actually looked for, or down to about 38. Uh, it looks like we bottomed at 36, to be fair. Um, I suspect that, again, the low is in. I think that the low is in both in gold on a daily chart as well as silver on a daily chart. Both of them have hit key levels. And again, I've been watching uh, horizontals for gold as well. 1308 became support became support up we go and um, i'm now watching this particular line here for support i want to see where the goal can punch through 1377 to the upside which is the prior high if we drill even in even further to the 240 minute chart what you'll find is 
that again gold is bouncing from a significant area and what i said uh, was that's the place to look for support in gold and if i get all the circles out of the way you can see that that seems to be holding relatively well so i'd been paying attention to 1336 as a very key level for gold 1336 has worked numerous times we've actually had resistance support resistance support and again this morning support this is a very key level and so i've been paying attention to three levels over the last month i've been paying attention to 1308 to 1310 which we looked at 1336 and 1362 which is the post brexit high that was a high we tried to get up above it and then we fell back those are the three levels i've been paying attention to in gold as far as i'm concerned there's a wedge forming in gold the wedge is as follows 1377 the prior high back there and support along the lower parallel keep an eye on gold to see whether we can breach out of this particular wedge i am a little bit wary because of the fact that i think the dollar is going to go higher but that being said, we actually have overall bullish conditions on the larger time frames. Silver, well, like I said um, and have said for about the last three or four weeks, silver's doing absolutely nothing. It's drifting sideways in the post-referendum um, period. And as far as I was concerned, all I wanted to see was, could we break out of that? And what I said last week going into non-farm payrolls was, look for resistance because I, I just don't see anything happening. Sure enough, we rolled over. I would have been looking for support a little bit lower. And we, we haven't made it to resistance. We haven't made it to support so all i can really do in terms of silver is pay attention to the daily chart right there i want to see the close on this bar ideally i'd like to see a close above 20 pushing it really i know but i want to see a nice bullish close on this particular bar to indicate a further length to the upside boy i feel like i've been talking for 51 minutes and five seconds according to camtasia yeah i have um i think i covered everything I think I did. Currencies, uh, indices, well, we went through ES anyway. Haven't got time to cover them all. Um, I mean, let's have a look, see a couple of the big picture ones. Um, Marlboro Man, you're very welcome. And by the way, you've got to give up those things, they'll kill you. Um, Russell on a weekly. Pay attention, we're in a very interesting area. E mini SP on a, a monthly. Be careful once we get up around 2200 i think that's a key area and by the way for perspective there you go look at this resistance here becoming support now look this is last august support look at this support up we go i see nothing bearish i would be looking for resistance around 2200 nasdaq on a weekly nah, honestly there's not a lot that appeals to me on this i'd probably keep an eye for resistance just a little bit above where we are right now guys i'm gonna leave it at that my throat is starting to dry up i hope this was a useful session for you all um i've got some nice comments coming into the chat thank you very much i will get a recording up onto the site um this afternoon um uh, everyone that has been registered for this webinar will receive an email with a link to the recording so if i went through it a bit too quick um, you'll have the ability to like just go back and review the recording again hope it was helpful and to those of you that are um, members i will be in chat for the next five minutes and see if there are any questions you'll have a great day take care bye-bye